Baby Isaac is on the way. She doing better. She took a little bit of medicine. Yeah, my body's covered. I don't think it really hit me yet, but it's some contraction. It's like I'm really about to need medicine. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I never knew that girl in here. Yeah. Epidural? Epidural. I'm the epidural guy. Oh, amazing. I'm having contraction right now. Hold on. I'm one of the epidural guys. Okay, well, you have that contraction. I'm going to get everything set up. And then we'll get the nurse in here and get started, okay? Okay. Has anyone talked to you about the epidural yet? Mm, not really. Did you sign the consent form? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was just minor, but I didn't know if it was going deeper. Do you have about epidurals? I really don't. Have you ever had one before? No, that's my first question. Okay. First time for everything. Mm -hmm. So the most important part about the epidural is uh, positioning. The better position you get in for the epidural, the easier it goes in and the less risk we have of, of taking a long time or causing uh, an injury that we, are, we don't want, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Clean sterile drape. No reaching back behind you after I put this on, okay? Okay, let's have you get in that position now. Tension of burn. One, two, three, pinch. And there's a little bit of the burn, okay? This is just the numbing medicine for the bigger needle. The worst part of the whole thing. You're doing awesome. As the needle's going in, you're going to feel maybe little pops. That's normal, it's just going through the ligaments. If you feel that it's not in the middle, let me know, okay? Sometimes you can tell that it's a little off to the left or a little off to the right. We want it to be right in the middle. Sometimes it's in the middle, you also don't feel anything. How long it's been, you can take After I 
push the medicine, mm -hmm. usually within three contractions, it's all better. Some people notice it after the first contraction. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're almost done. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to throw the catheter now, okay? Sometimes the catheter goes off to one side and cause a little zinger in your bottom. It goes down your leg. Just let me know, okay? The needle's out of your back now, mm -hmm. so you can sit normal again. Mm -hmm. Test those are just to make sure we're not in a blood vessel or anything like that, which can happen, but it's extremely rare. And what it does is it just kind of makes your heart race. On rare occasions, it can give you a funny taste in your mouth or ring in your ears. But usually it's a heart racing type thing. Mm -hmm. catheter for some reason is in a blood vessel, the medicine doesn't stay in the space and it just gets absorbed by you. So we don't want that. We want to be in a bright spot. Okay. Aspiration is negative, looking good. Okay, starting the test dose. You're going to feel a little pressure in your back as this medicine goes in. Kind of small space. How are we doing? I'm going to give you a little extra stuff just to help the onset a little quicker. <laughs> that looks so dusty. So dusty. That looks so basic. <laughs> I can't. So, I wanted to pop in really quickly to give an update. I don't really remember what the last update was but it's pretty much 12 o'clock noon we have been here for maybe five hours i think and six seven no it have to be longer than that or we've been here since like five wow i don't know like seven hours but i did end up getting an epidural because child i couldn't take it so um, at the epidural, we kind of been switching around. I did get some other medication. I think, what was that, Zofran? For nausea? Yes. Yeah, so I got um, Zofran for nausea because I'm just sick on and off. And get bad heartburn. So now the update as far as my cervix, I am a four and a half and we're progressing. I'm really kind of loopy, I guess you can say. And you see I was able to put on my gown, child, I'm out here. So I got my gown on and we're just going to see how things go. Uh, Mama Dula gave me a peanut ball. <laughs> you see her over there living her best life. Hi. <laughs> She's over there. She's the best. Oh, whatever. Look at David. Just She's saving David right now. I'll tell you that much because David is watching Black Panther and he, and he is not caring about me. He was not caring about me and my life. I don't talk bad, I talk facts. And he was there lending a helping arm while watching movies. I was actually surprised. I'm surprised how much you are just chilling. I thought you would have been worse, but you vibing. It's a long day. I know, so you got time to just chill. You know, this morning he was um he was um gone putting everything in the car, child. He was ready. He was throwing everything. Just he the one told me to get ready to go to the hospital. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. We ain't gonna do this no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Do you think you need to go to the hospital?" I was like, mm. "He sat there, had his phone out, and time two contractions." She was like, "No." He was like, come on. So, yeah. So now, I think they talking Pitocin. They trying, to, they trying to mess up my life. That's what they trying to do. They trying to give me Pitocin. 
so I really need to understand and get this uh, epidural together because it's starting to wear off on my left side. Should I lay on my left side? Okay. I'm thinking we should do high policy so we can get it covered to hold. So what, sit up in the chair. What you want? More? Sit yes. up more? Yep, I'm gonna sit like a chair. I'm gonna take this away from your front. Okay, so we're about to take this little peanut off, so I'm gonna try to. I don't mind it. And there it is. <laughs> okay you guys it is 2 17 and i'm just finally uh getting out of the room and not being by clarissa side for the first time uh so it's been about a good uh 10 hours uh, so the process so far has just been long it's a lot longer than I thought it would be um, but other than that everything's been okay uh, she's at the point now where she's doing a lot of sleeping and, and stuff like that so just trying to keep busy and entertain myself uh, so yeah now I'm just stepping outside for a little bit and I'm coming back in but can't wait to see baby girl. Hopefully she comes soon and we can enjoy her presence. So, um, don't have any nervous feelings or anything like that. Just real calm and, and relaxed, but just waiting a long time. But, um, but everything's going good so far. The staff have been great. Uh, all our family have been great. We've gotten a lot of support. Um, and now we're just waiting on baby girl. All right, hopefully we'll see her soon. Hey, Chris, can you tell me, you know, what happened? No. Overall, it's just, you know, at the end of the day, and I'm going to speak on this thing again. I'm going to speak on this thing again because my thing is, is that it's frustrating when you're a person that basically all in all is what 413 which I don't know where I'm at in my city meetings or whatnot but looking back on my experience in having such a high risk pregnancy having you know going through the short service situation and the pressures of that you know which is I felt in some ways I was already robbed of my birth plan in the sense of I wanted a natural birth, I wanted to be at a birthing center or whatever, or even a home birth or whatnot. And I kind of, because of all my complications, it's the situation of when a nurse comes in and you tell somebody what it is that you feel and they're not listening to that, that is frustrating. I purposely came out of my own healthcare group to come to a whole new hospital because I felt that the energy would be better. I felt that my experience would be better. I felt that they would be a hospital that cared about me and they were so relaxed. And I felt because of my complications on the top of the experience that I want, 
this was the happy media to that situation. So I literally went to a whole new hospital, not knowing nobody, just because I have faith, you know? So the situation is, is that I'm telling them, I'm already not 100% happy that I had to have an epidural because I wanted a natural birth. But at the same time, you gotta flex and flow. You gotta go with whatever it is. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about, you know, don't allow people to move you in a way that you don't wanna be moved. So I ended up getting the epidural or whatnot. And I felt amazing about it once I had it because I felt like I'm gonna be able to meet my daughter soon and do that in a way where it was all about her. So I'm getting woken up by heavy contractions and pain and stuff like that. You know, I'm thinking it's gonna be a simple question of, hey, help me with the epidural. You know, I don't, I'm having all these pains. Just, you know, simply just do it. And they're having the anesthesiologist, which is not the same one who gave me my first epidural. I'm getting woken up by heavy pains and stuff like that. And they're coming in here. One person, the anesthesiologist, came in here basically telling me what it is that I feel versus uh, what it is that I'm saying that I'm feeling. I, the whole reason in the beginning of going natural is because I was afraid of that. Of somebody in the healthcare field telling me what it is that I feel, what I'm telling them pain is she was just telling me that I'm feeling pressure. The first thing she said was I uh, I didn't push the epidural button as many times as said, knowing that uh, I did more than that. And instead of listening to me, it was kind of like, well, you didn't do it right. Versus like, let me check and see if there's something wrong with the button. Let me check and see, you know, maybe we could give you a different medication or something like that. I just felt like it was like a blame game. So instead of explaining it to me like, hey, this is what we can do. This is, it may not work in the same way that you expected to or in the beginning or whatever. And she was just all in all explaining, telling me everything. And I get her energy, like, instead of telling me, hey, if you push it three more times or whatever, and then we're gonna go ahead and give you another heavy dose of epidural, I would have been cool. But she went out there and talked to talk and, and gave information that she didn't give, give me personally, which is also a violation that you can't do that uh, confidentiality, especially if it's to people who's not even over me or whatever, giving my information to other people and nurses that is not over me. So that's already a problem in itself. And then after explaining, she, apparently she gave the doses of the medication I was asking for, but didn't explain that to me or whatnot, and explained it to them. So now the nurses are coming here, like I, I'm the problem. I'm the one that's doing stuff that I'm not supposed to be doing. So because I thought that I wasn't getting the medication I was supposed to get, or the way she explained it, I got up, got on all fours. You shouldn't be able to get up doing the epidural. Why am I sitting up and I feel like the average person? I might as well went natural. I don't want the middle. It's either or. It's no gray areas. It's what I want because it's my, my birth experience. It's nobody else's. If something happens, I don't want to hear no oops. Because they never say sorry. It's like usually this don't happen. Or you're 1%. I'm not a statistic. I'm an individual. It ain't that many people in here right now to be getting this type of experience. And that's what I don't appreciate. There's a way to, to even basically disagree with me and to communicate it in a loving way to where I can comprehend it and accept what it is that you're saying. But I can't accept it if you're coming here with a heavy energy and then telling me that I'm wrong. I know what I did or whatever. Ask me, don't tell me about myself because I'm a grown woman. 
and I'm having a baby. At the end of the day, I'm no more pushing up this child, not you. So don't tell me about a machine. Don't tell me about medication. Don't tell me about usually. Ask me what it is that hit. What? Ask me what it is that the problem is, and, and let's try to move forward. Communication, and this is exactly what I was trying to avoid because. Y'all know on my channel I talk a lot about the statistics of, you know, black women in the hospital and um, mortality rates and death rates is highest in the state of Florida than anywhere in the United States. And that's the reason why I came here because I felt like it's quality care. And quality care includes bedside manners. And if I'm not getting that, that's a problem because I won't be progressing. Why am I sitting here worrying about people when I should be worrying about my child? That's a problem in itself. So I'm not going to let people steal my joy because at the end of the day, there's a bigger picture. At the end of the day, once I leave this place, I'm not going to see these people again. But I'm going to always have this experience. So at the end of the day, regardless, this is you when you go through the same thing and you get overwhelmed or whatever regroup yourself and don't allow people to steal your joy meditate about it pray about it and then take a moment and then start over again and that's what i'm going to do i know that i'm in, i have been in my feelings but at the same time this is not going to make me not speak up for myself because they can't do anything to you that you they can do anything to you unless you allow them to. And no matter what, if they get upset or whatever it is, what it is, because they can't hold you hostage or whatnot. They can refuse things or whatever, this and that at the end of the day, but stay stern, allow yourself to be upset or whatever and get past it. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to pray about it and we're about to be happy because at the end of the day, my baby's coming. And it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So now it seems like they're having more of the state, or it's like a, oh, okay, you know, this and that, or whatever. Like, just it's us as black people, especially, and I'm not making this a, a race thing, but it is facts, it is statistics if you look it up yourself. And black women die a lot more in their infants in the hospital. In, in giving birth to any other race and you have to make sure that you're the one is taking care of yourself even if you have to be in the hospital you have to cover you because there's a thing called intuition and a lot of times intuition saves lives and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna protect myself and keep myself around people who understand where I'm coming from and if they don't understand they can kick rocks and I don't care if they're family or anybody so it is what it is they can get mad and I'm gonna just have my space and just keep it pushing I'll just be able to update you guys after everything is said and done and um, we just gonna do what we do so I'll just talk to y'all in a bit, and once I get an update on the service and all that, I'll be able to tell you more. Game coming right to you, mama. Just say free black youngster.